Let's get serious, know. folks. What'd you get for Christmas? <laughs> What'd you yeah, get for Christmas? Get tools? Toy, toy, turning tools, turning toys, gizmos, gadgets. I got, I got a gift card to Rockler. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I got a gift card. Yeah, I got a Visa gift card from the, the daughter's boyfriend that I can spend on on toys. I forgot well, about that. Year, year, mind. I got a new nothing. laptop. What are you going to do with it? I can stay in the meetings now because it works better right. than my old one. <laughs> right, there you there go. You go. Right on, Dale. Yeah. Craig, do you use that thing you held up for checking your dimensions on your rover? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's for. <laughs> Craig held up a rap Craig held up a new rifle scope a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I he, got a couple of those to check his dimensions on his ruler. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'd I'd go bring mine out and show you, but I got I got the scope on the new rifle too. Yeah. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody else? Anybody else getting any you know new chucks or a new lathe or got a new visor. Got a new visor? I ordered oh, a yeah. new visor. Yeah, bionic one, so it's like full yeah. solid. It's really nice. Right on, right on. That's I, a got good some, one. I got some ideas. I got some ideas. Yeah, we showed a, we had a video show last week of a guy who got hit wearing a bionics uh, with a block that came off. And oh, uh, yeah. one of our guys showed a clip of that. And he had, he had a little damage. But not as much damage as if he wasn't wearing that bionics. You're right. You're right. That was Boy. a big chunk of wood to hit him. He got kissed hard. I've been kissed wearing one. And I, yeah. I mean, don't, don't let this fool you. I didn't get hurt really bad. Um, I got my bell rung. But, um, yeah. It convinced me, you know, that I'd always worn them before, but not since then. It didn't matter on how big it was because if you get it with, hit with a pen blank, Right here, it'll you know that's all it takes. It rings your bell, and, and hey, I don't know if y'all ran across it. Replacement parts—they're expensive. Yeah, they are. And with those shields, you know, they're only good for taking one full impact one time. Because after you get hit, you need to be you need to be replacing that and putting on a new shield because that dexterity of that shield has been lost that initial force that hit it same thing if you spray if you if you make contact with certain chemicals you were in it and you're doing some chemical uh, some yeah. chemicals sometimes you'll see some little fracturing it's little little pots of set, little set. Hairline cracks. your whole shield has been compromised you yes. can't see it but the whole shield's been compromised and <clears> it's only <throat> as good as that small investment make that small investment get a replacement and get the replacement when you buy the new one. You say, well, that's like buying a spare tire when you need a car. You do. Right. Yep. You know, you don't, you don't go get the spare tire once you get the flat. Uh, so get the spare tire. And same thing to do with the belt on your lathe. If you if you got a, an exotic lathe uh, or pretty much any lathe and, and, and they're they're prone to to be hard on belts. Get a spare belt. Get one ordered, and put it in your refrigerator or someplace where it won't see solar or get infrared light on it or anything. And just just store it away. Cool dark place. Yeah. Right beside the mustard. I tell you what, it's been the longest wait you ever wait in your life to get a replacement part, and it's gonna break. Saturday morning at eight o'clock, and they don't open on Monday because of a holiday. So, all right, you throw a couple extra days in the shipment. Is this my background sounds popping in? Okay. Yeah, I took care of it. Oh, good. Thank you. Always be aware, folks, if your audio's on and you got something in the background like Jeopardy playing. Uh, we going we just going to jump in and kill our audio. Uh, that's okay. We're all friends just sitting around on the tailgate. Um, yeah, a little gin and tonic, I think one of them said. Uh -huh. 
All right. But it's been a it's good, been good. Hope we all had a great holiday. It's been time to spend with the family and uh, got another one coming up. Boy, I tell you what, it's going to be an interesting new year popping up. Uh, like I read a minute ago, when the when New Year's bell is rung, be standing on your left foot. No, stand there with your left foot in the air, so you have so you get started on the right foot. There you go. That was it. That was it. I knew it. Uh, that'd be something that you know, you'd find on the back page of a cheap magazine. Um, but look, looking forward. We got a good demonstration popping up tonight, don't we, Dane? Yes, we do. Good, yes, good. We do. I have some, heard some comments about the, the the ones we've done the last couple of weeks. A lot we're doing a lot of detail lately on demonstrations, and folks, we really walk on that because some. I, I belong to a club where a guy said we don't want to do those plain old demonstrations. We want something artsy and things. No, you know what I want to see in demonstrations. I want to see technique because I don't care if you're turning a whistle or a bowl or a platter or a box. It doesn't matter. I want to see how you turn it, how you hold it, how you make the cuts, how you offset it. What do you do to get these, these odd cuts and shapes and how you, how can you eliminate a ton of sanding um, how you make good, clean cuts, um, things like that. I'm looking for the technique. That's a big part of demonstrations is technique. So if you say, oh, they're just going to do another bottle stopper or they're just going to do this or that, there's no just do any of this stuff. We're going to take a turner of your quality or more and or less, and we're going to show you how they go about something and you might absorb it, but at the same time, you might say, you know, if you don't do that, it'll come out like this. So it's brain food. You'll see what they do, and you say, I can improve on that. And that's why we have you there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here. Because we want you to come back to us and tell us. And don't feel bad about that. We get done a demonstration. If you got two cents to throw on a table, chink them up there. Right. It's that we we want to know what you think about it, and if you got a better idea, we're not too proud to hear another idea. And trust me, we do poo poo our demonstrations. We do, we because we're all sitting on the table like a bunch of people in a parking lot. You know, we we can we can be honest. I mean, we're, we're, the beauty of worldwide wood turners is we're not married to a manufacturer, a club. An organization. We're right. not. We're not. I'm not bound by the, the the spirit of we can't do that because it might offend this guy or that guy. No, we can't do that because it's unsafe, and we can mention it's unsafe, or not recommend it because it's unsafe, or flat say was that a smart move. We can do those kinds of things, but we don't want to offend anybody. It's just fact. What I'm looking from you, every time we meet, I'm looking from you is good, honest feedback. You see something, like it, don't like it. I want your feedback. I want you to tell us. If you don't want to get online and do it, go right to the chat button and type it into the chat. You can put it there. You can send it personally to Dane or myself or any other co-host that's on that board. You can just go right in and just do a pers personal chat form, and that won't show on the chart. They'll get it, but it won't show on the chart because um, personal chats don't pop up on everybody. Right. Um, it's, not safe. it's we we really really want that feedback, and sometimes that gives us more input for lining up demonstrations. You know, when I read through the chat, and, and we are doing a demonstration. I'm sitting here, and y'all might think I'm being rude, but I sit here with my iPad on another feed for this exact same program, and this feed on my iPad is exactly the demonstrator. I'm watching a demonstration close up. But up here on my main screen, I've got the chat. And so I can pop up and look at the chat, 
and see if there's something pop up I need to pay attention to on the chat. But I'm focusing on that screen. It's like somebody said, they, they just got a new laptop computer so they can stick with us. Well, I found that a long time ago. My attention span problem that I suffer with is such that this is how I can do it. Uh, I don't want to lose the chat. I want to see it. I want to be part of it. But I also don't want to lose the demonstration because there's things you're doing that I'm sitting here clicking off thinking, you know what? I used to do something like that, but not that way. And, you know, here's an idea. Uh, it, it, and you, you want you want to think that it's a simple little idea and maybe to make a little simple five minute demonstration. And that, that was my quest when we started this little thing 222 meetings ago. Isn't that something? Today's 222. Um, two, 222 meetings ago, we started this thing. It was that if we had a little mini demonstration, we've way walked past that. But it was yeah. that if you had something that would take five minutes to give us a mini demonstration, we got five minutes. All you have to do is tell us. And we've done that. The, what we have done in the past is tips and tricks. And all of a sudden it became overwhelming because everybody and their brother would say, yeah, that's a good idea. But did you know? And that when it gets it, it I get scared. It's like hold my beer. Really? Um, you've heard that expression. Uh, you think that's something? Hold my beer. Let me show you this. Um, we get a lot of that because you wood turners are just those kinds of folks. Um, you, you get into wood turning, you find out there's no place in your town that sells this and this and this and this. And if you want to do it, you got to make your own tool or create one or bend one or warp one or whatever. Or if you do bend one, warp one or whatever, you got to get it fixed. And, you know, so you become a master of a lot of trades and all those ideas. Come right back to us. I, my very first bowl, uh, rough, roughing gouge. I hate the term roughing gouge. It's not a great description of a gouge. It's no, a deep booty gouge. Um, <laughs> but and, and I don't sharpen mine like a roughing gouge. I sharpen it like sort of like a gouge. And uh, I, bent, I bent my first one. And I brought it to a guy that I worked with, and I said, I wonder if I get this straightened out. And he said, you can get it straightened out, but it's going to bend again. He said, let me take it home. I'll put it in the oven. I'll heat it up. I'll put a bar on it, and I'll reinforce it. And I said, what's that going to do? And he said, it's going to make it a little bit heavier in the shank, but you don't go that far back on it when you cut with it, but it will never bend again. And he was right. It never bent again. And I used that for another 15 years or so. And then I got a one uh, a D-Way that had that, when it was shaped, it wasn't cheap shaped. It had a staunch base to it. And was it made cheap, um, like so many are. And it had a good arm on it because mine got broke just like a lot of other guys. I had it overextended over the tool rest. It's a it's a habit. You go on, 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 and then you don't realize your your the distance for your crank is way out there, and you get a catch, and boom, that's it. So you know, we we bend those things. We learned about it. I learned about it. I, this guy says, okay, you can't do this because of the metal and or lack thereof, and we can fix this. So a lot of us run through this kind of stuff. That's what we want to know about. What did you do? Where'd you come up with it? Um, when this organization got started, Parfix 3408, they get the number right? Yes. Parfix 3408. That was a boom. <laughs> that was you, uh, Dane, Brenda, Ronnie, Ronnie uh, Bonnet, and a few yeah. others. I'll talk First about play. it. I'll, I'll talk about it. And then we First found play. Mark. Yeah. And, and Mark Soleil, who, who distributed, um, uh, he came on and talked about it one time. But people weren't even talking about using CA for a finish. 
And we went six months with yes and no's on CA finish and improvements and conditioners and all that. And then uh, the other day, somebody contacted me about wood hardener. They were going to get some Minwax wood hardener and tighten up the, the fibers in Paralam box uh, blanks. And, and that's that colored plywood. And I said, do you have any really, really thin super glue? Because you don't go by that C A that 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 wood hardener. Just put it on the table and drop some super fine super glue through the top of it. It'll yeah. rock it through it. You'll see the wet spot on the bottom in about 15, 20 minutes. It'll go right through it. Let it sit for a day or two and it's well, it's gonna be like a rock. Yeah. And I understand it turned out pretty good. He was afraid to turn it because it had a lot of splinters and fracturing, but it wasn't the wood. It was the, one of the most prime reasons for wood being hard to turn on any lathe, anytime, anywhere. Cool. The number one cause, dull tools, poor presentation. He didn't, he didn't picture what was happening to that block of wood. It's a mass of splinters, and he was trying to cut it, chop at it, and using basic Technique. Well, you can't. It's not basic wood. When we talk a little bit more, he learned how to slice rather than chop. And that's what Mark Soleil, good old Mark's deal was. He was a wood slicer, not a wood turner. He was a wood slicer. Because it showed you how to take that little fingernail gouge, put the right cut on it, and make slicing guts all the way through from soup to nuts. Um, and we we talked about super glue for six months how to do it and still today i heard last week i was watching re the repeat last week somebody said we having a little problem like that and, said, and i think it was dane said that's when you get at you 3408 yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's he talking about problem sorted it works it works and that's why we're here because sometimes it's such an obvious answer most of this this place it You've been turning and wondered, how can I get past this spider web? How can I get past this fracturing? How can I get past this, this pulling? You, you've seen a beautiful piece come out with literally pit holes in it that's down there and you say, man, how did that happen? Well, you, you, your fiber, your wood is deteriorating. It's coming out. And your blades aren't sharp enough to keep it from doing so. So you have to change the quality of that fiber. And you can do it. It's real easy with super thin super glue one pass or two passes of it to tighten it up a little bit so you can go back and make a slicing cut or scraper cut we're talking scraper with a burl on it now not a, a, a scraper with a straight front edge that's kind of a, a abrasive um if you use a carbide you got to roll it up on the shoulder to get a slicing cut <laughs> but we come up with those things all the time you can modify the product you're working with and attack it differently and go from chopping at it to slicing on it. And if you want to practice that, if you're a new turner and you want to practice that, here's a good one. Chunk up a block of two by four. Just good old fashioned two by four, get cut into two by two and get out some of your favorite tools and go to slicing on it, cutting on it. Keep changing your presentation of your tool. Go from a gouge, chopping straight in, and see what it does to the wood. Oh, you're going to cut the wood, but see what it does to the wood. And then pick it up on the shoulder a little bit and go at it at an angle. Change the angle of presentation. You'll see the difference. Then kick it up a little bit more, change the angle a little bit more, and go in so you can ride the bevel and do a slicing cut. That's right. See a little bit better difference. Then one more time, get really crazy, kick it way up on the shoulder, be reading just a little bitty fuzzy part of the tip and run that little bitty bit of a bevel and see what happens when those ribbons come off. You just sliced wood. That's right. Now, um, there's a, Ellie Evacera had this thing where he bevel, he double beveled um, a, a Ellsworth type gouge. 
to just reduce the back bevel because you don't use the whole bevel. You don't need the whole bevel. It's what you can read, you can use. So it take that whole back bevel off and leave just about a 16th or an eighth of an inch maybe. Be generous, put an eighth of an inch there. And you're reading that one eighth of an inch, what you can do with it is unbelievable. Do it to the two by four, just one time. And, but not just with the gouge, do it with that gouge. The next gouge, the next gouge, the fingernail gouge, the skew, right on down the line. Same block of wood and pra practice those presentation attacks each time, concentrating on all your efforts, all your directions being right here. Every one of them comes right here. This is the on and off switch. You turn it on, you turn it off. You turn it on, you turn it off. Don't have to raise the arm, pushing it out. Hey, we're old. Those parts don't move so good. You know, just twist the hand. If you got to do all the other stuff, think about how much mass is moving and what you're asking it to do. Bring it down up to, to something you can control. This is not a marathon. And just you you and watch that tool cut. Um, I used to enjoy watching people, professional turners, make their presentation cuts, not to see what they were turning, but to see what their presentation cuts would go. And good one, Tim Cook was really good. I mean, Nick Cook, Nick Cook was really good one because um, he'd start with a block of wood and a minute later, I was have finished product. People were thinking, wow, that was amazing. And I'm, I'm watching the tape. I taped it. I was concentrating on his cuts because what he did was take a tool and from start to finish, he could take one tool and do 10 cuts with it and get 10 finishes with those 10 cuts and then barely sand it. Boom, you got it. Because he wasn't sanding it to shape. He sliced it to shape. He wasn't taking out the mistakes. He didn't have any. So we... we we always look for that for you folks. Presentation technique. When we do the demonstrations, we're looking for that. You know, I think we get these crazy oddball things. We do, but they're all turners like you. And we go shopping for them. If you see somebody that's got that kind of technique or presents that, let us know about it. Uh, and, and everybody's welcome. What I, what I if, like... If it, I'm the, sorry to interrupt, uh, Captain yes, Eddie, but... If anybody hasn't watched Steve Jones from um, from the UK, he's a, he, he's, a, he, he's a professional wood turner, um, fourth fourth or fifth generation, I think, uh, wood turner. And if you watch the techniques that he uses, he is just um, he is doing everything that you're talking about. He I'll, really I'll, is. I'll second, I'll second that. It, yeah, it's an phenomenal. absolute pleasure to watch him turn. What's his name? Steve, Steve Jones. Jones. Steve you can Jones. Find his, you can find his uh, YouTube shorts and Facebook clips uh, under his handle, The Wood Turner. Yeah. And he is absolutely brilliant. brilliant. I have never seen oh. anybody better using a skew chisel than he does. Yep. And he 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 uses a skew chisel on a daily basis. He um, does copy turning by yep. eye and um, a storyboard, and he is absolutely brilliant. And he echoes just everything that Captain Ed E was talking about there. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel yeah, the same. Understand what that tool can do. The tool is a knife. And when I used to teach here in my shop, um, if I had to explain something to, to a, a new turner, I'd say, all right, let me show you. Just get out the pocket knife. Yeah, what I want to do it with such so just that in, until you can understand how a pocket knife will got that, you don't understand anything. <laughs> it's, it's all the same. You're cutting wood. No. Okay, yeah. Talking about the pocket knife there, um, Steve actually did some turning using a shovel. Yeah. All right. He, uh, he, 
he, he did. Eddie, yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah he, he did use a shovel doing some turning. Steve did it. Oh, quite a few years ago, this was now. I've got a video of me doing that with a little garden shovel. I'll put a long handle. All right. Okay. I, I ground the fern off of it to make it like a gouge to show how it would work going in for a, a demonstration at a club meeting. And I was told by the hierarchy at the club that that, that appeared to be unsafe. I couldn't show it. And I said, I was going to show how to turn with it. I was showing how the gouge worked. And the guy right. said, well, it might be misleading, so let's not do it. And I said, can I use my soup spoon? <laughs> I yeah, I, I, I think Steve's used a spoon as well. He used a dessert spoon as well. I, I have a military soup spoon that was very heavy. And <laughs> I've uh, done one with an axe. Yeah. Yeah, it's, he did use an axe as well. Yeah. No, it's just a blade. detail I work with a roughing gauge as well. It's a blade. How can, if you can cut with a blade, you can cut with a blade. Um, and, and Steve John's right on the money. Uh, and it's just how you hold it and how you present it. And yeah, I just yeah, I just watched him turn a mallet in 56 seconds. Yeah. And I used to, I, I joked about it when I, I, somebody would say, can you show me how to turn with this? And I'd give it the headstock and turn the wheel on the headstock and say, okay, then. Make the cut. You want to turn it on? Well, I got it on. It's okay. I'm turning the wheel. Make the cut. Well, can I go faster? You don't need to. Won't make any difference to me. But here I'm turning the wheel. Just go ahead and make the cut. That's all you need. Is you right. got to have 4,000 RPMs to make the cut. Something's wrong. You know, you're going to get a finer, better cut probably, but if it'll make the cut, it's the tool in the presentation that does that cut. It'll show you It'll show you that you've got the right tool presentation. You're on the bevel to correct lane, and you're taking the, the correct amount of uh, feed proportion going into the wood with the tool, turning it by hand. I know I show that every time when I demonstrate. Yeah, and it's, it's a simple procedure. It's really good. Um, I, I did, I built a, I took a 1014 jet mini jet, the mini jet, and put a, uh, a, a, a treadmill motor on it that would run up to 5,000 RPMs, but down to about two or three RPMs. And I was showing a friend of mine how to turn on it. Mm. And this is a friend I've had for 90% of my life or more. And we both started in a cabinet shop together in 1960. And he was wanting to make billiard cues. And I was trying to show him how to make slicing cuts. And he, he wasn't really understanding slicing cuts. So we chunked up a piece and I was showing him how to slide it. And he said, well, let's crank it up. And no, watch. And we, we slid and he was sliding down that piece. I don't think he ever brought the speed up. He was so dumb and happy just these ribbons were coming off and he was so happy with that. And he says, this is beautiful. It might take me a little bit longer. This is beautiful. And it got to where it was so slick. You'd barely have to sand it to get it in shape because it was making beautiful little ribbons coming off of it. Um, we built him an eight foot long mini jet lake for his shop with beds uh, and extensions and, and ways and, and, tool rest and all, so he could go make cues. And he did it for a long time. Uh, we lost him about two years ago, he passed on. But he he would, he loved the ribbons and he'd come over to see me and bring up a, a garbage bags full of ribbons to put in my gardens. Um, then I had to get on them because they'd bring me walnut. I can't put walnut on garden. You don't want my plants off. But it, he he really could understand how that blade sliced. Before that, he was cutting like, like the Delta book says when you bought the Delta lathe. You know, an eighth of an inch away and this and this and you do this and you do that. Um, that was good for students, but it was going to teach a wood turn. And we have to watch those. They have to watch for that. There's some, there's places you can get some really bad advice and, and we get it here and we counter it. Um, can't tell you that they're dumb as a rock, but you know, we can counter it. And we do. And I'm kind of happy that we do that. Um, Absolutely. if you get, if you have an item to show for gallery tonight, folks, you can do so. Uh, all you have to do is go to chat 
and type in, I have something to show. And we have people watching. Get this. We have what we call co-hosts. And these are folks that help us produce the program in a meeting each week. And it's appointed positions from folks that say, hey, I want to help. And it's because you can't sit here and drive the bus and see where all the traffic is at one time. So our co-hosts are watching to see where the traffic is, where the bumps are, if the light changes, things like that. So if we you hear somebody referred to as a co-host, they're not the hierarchy. You can be one. All you have to do is say, hey, can I help? Can I be part of this operation? Yes. Why? Because it's your club. It's always been your club. It was formed to be your club. The, this, this club has only had one financial attempt in, in its existence, and it's right here. Club stickers. I bought, I bought 2,000 of these stickers last year, and we sell them to club members. Ten stickers on, they, they see a roll, a roll. We'll give you ten stickers for the charge, charge of five dollars. And that information is on the front page of our website. Now, if you live outside the continental United States, I need an extra dollar to mail it to you because of the postage. But I can give you 10 stickers for $5. That offsets our cost for the stickers. There's no slush fund in a the corner. There wasn't a slush fund to buy them. Um, we took a chance and we did it. Other things we have going, um, we have patterns. If you want to get your, your outfit embroidered, your, your your name on a shirt or your jacket or whatever. We have those patterns on our website that you can use for free. If you have a shirt that you'd like to get screen printed front and back, we have that available. Those details are on on the front page of our 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 um, website. And all you have to do is you pick out the shirt, you send you follow the directions, you send it to us with the prepaid mailer. And the check for the for the screen printing. I mean, yeah, for the screen printing, we get a screen print and send it back to you. They look really good too, folks. The professional depends on the quality of the clothing you put it on. If you come to us with dirt cheap, it's going to come back looking and last dirt cheap. So don't go dirt cheap on a jacket, on a shirt, or a jacket, or a vest, or whatever. It all looks good. Um, and we don't have any other enterprises. We really don't. And it's just because we want to get the name Worldwide Wood Turners out there. And if we can help you in any way once in a while with this, with your club, your organization, um, we we can't buy sponsorships. We don't do prizes and giveaways. Uh, we try to keep it extremely fair and equal. And in fact, uh, what you 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 may have caught us reeling in, I say or. Pulling back sometimes on members that might go a little bit close to the edge on promotion. Um, I, I'm okay if you mention that you're using a a, a jet mini jet mini jet 1014 lathe, and you've got a Barracuda chuck and a one way live uh, live center and a um, robust tool rest and an Ellsworth gouge and center and things like that. Um, th those things you use, but we try to stay away from saying, you know, I have this and this and this and this and this, and they all came from, you know, and they get great, you know, that's a commercial. So we don't do commercials. So, okay. That's not, that's how we handle it. Why? Because it wouldn't be fair. Wouldn't be fair to you, them or anybody else. And I, I don't want to imply that you need something that fancy to turn wood. I've seen people turn wood with screwdrivers that have been sharpened. I, I know a guy that hollowed the vessel almost 30 inches deep with a modified Model T tire iron because that was some really fine tool steel then. And he modified it, put a handle on it, and he hollowed it out with it. And that, that guy was one of the top-rated cardiac cardiologist doctors in the world. His daddy was one of the founders of Ashram in Ashram Hospital. Uh, and and it wasn't, he was cheap. He didn't wait to find the tools. So 
Doc found out where to, how to make it. And he did. We're, we're trying to do that. So we'll share a lot of those secrets with you. And I'll always love to see what y'all come up with. Got a gallery item? Put it in there and let us know. If you got an event coming up, put it in there. And the chat is open and free. Open and free. Right. If you have an IRD coming up, if you have a class project, uh, a workshop, anything that I can attend, um, Gary can attend, Wayne, Craig, Dane, anybody, if you have something we can attend, even if we got to go pay for it, put it in the chat. In the chat. If you want to know about it. That's and where it belongs, on, in the chat. Send it on to our webmaster because he puts it in our event calendar. That's the only section. like it. That's the only event calendar like that in the world, folks. And what are, what are, we, are, we, are we 10 days away or seven days away from the, from the greatest newsletter ever existed? That's yes. And yes. Seven days away from the world's greatest newsletter dealing with wood turning. Seven days away. And you could be, if you weren't part of that one, you could be in issue number two. We're going to talk more about that. You could be in issue number two. But number one, it's going to be fantastic. It's right here. It's free. It's part of this group. What do we got going, bud? Well, we've got a, we've got a few guys that's already popped in uh, for some uh, galleries. So let's swing over to it. Let's go to Craig. He's going to be Uno number one. Hey, Craig. I thought I was kidding earlier, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I really did. Well, this is what I started last week and wasn't ready for show last week, but it's ready this week. Oh, there you go. Look at those beans. I like that. I like the invert and, and, and the two different kinds, the coves and the beans. Yeah. I like that concept. Well, I've been making, I've been doing a lot of bowls and I wanted to do something just a little bit different. Uh, I thought about making this pedestal a little bit smaller, but I kind of figured the way it worked as a triangle and as, as bulky as this top is, that I thought it would probably be better to keep the pedestal, uh, I don't know, a little meaty. I thought it looked a little more balanced that way. I like the idea of the bead. The bead works for the bead. Look, the bead on a, on a base works for the first bead on the bottom of the, of the, of the, the, the bowl. So you have an invert expert right there, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it came out, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest pieces I've done so far. So, but that's all I got for showing, but I'm kind of proud What's of this. What's the wood it came and out. finish? Say what? What's the wood and finish? Uh, well, the, the wood is fog found on ground, uh, I believe with some oak. Uh, the finish was a maple uh, stain and uh, polyurethane gloss. I had to put it, it, this sucker soaked up, just drank that uh, polyurethane. So uh, the top part and the inside, I had to do three coats. The bottom, I've only got two, and I might just leave it there because it seemed to be a little bit more balanced. Looks good. Good, Craig. Like Hopefully, I, I, I get enough stock where I can actually start selling some of this stuff. There you go. Well, you just got to keep making one right after another. And well, I've be got there two in the shop time. right now. One of them's on the uh, Novachuk, and the other one I'd work on, but it needs the Novachuk too, and I've only got one of them. So. Well, I'll put it in the chat where you can get one for uh, $88 shipped to your door. Okay. All right. I'll put it in the chat. There's and there's probably been a hundred of us get get chucks from this this Canadian company, so it's legit to include myself. Oh well, cool. Yeah, I'll look. I'll look for it. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll message you here. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's go up to Wisconsin and see what Scott's got. Hey, Scott. Hello. So let me get rid of this. My stepson bought me this for Christmas. I like that. So I haven't used it yet, but I got it. Oh, it's a learning. Boy, you at one RPM. Learn that at one RPM on the outside of a piece, not the inside. My advice. So this is a uh tool handle that I made this week. It comes apart. And I also made this end too this week for holding the carbide. 
That's okay. nice. Um, the Pharaoh was made by one of our members, and I know we're not supposed to plug guys, but Martin Clarkson sent me some Pharaohs to try, and they're a little different than what you normally get, and I like them so far. So, I mean, seeing post by Martin, he must be back in the shop for a little bit. Yep, and then I made a soup bowl for my sister-in-law for her birthday. Nice. Black walnut? Nice. That's, Very that's nice. black walnut, yep. That's got some <laughs> great purple in it. Nice. It's got a little bit of sapwood. So, but that's all I've made so far this week. That's it for all me. Right, wonderful. All right. Thank you, sir. I'll hide up in the chat here. That's all right. All right. Let's go to. Let's see. I know she's on here. right ruby go ahead and start talking maybe you'll pop to the top okay now can you hear me oh i hear you now i got you all right well right at the beginning albert had said he was looking for some ideas for something new to do and my neighbor came over and said to me um can we make a sword and i said sure he said have you ever made one and i said no but we can work it out so we started out with one like this and pyrographied the handle a bit. But this was just a short one. It's only about three feet long. It does, ha it does have the blood channel down the middle. So then we progressed to another one. Made the turning a little fancier. Did Ooh. some memory and some wenge. <laughs> and this one's a full lay full size sword. That's outstanding, Ruby. That right. awesome. So there, Albert, Albert, that gives okay. you a new idea for something to try. <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> and on on this one, I have no words. And on that's this so, one, if so you notice great. on the handle, it's got a flat here. Well, when I turned it, I turned it round, but then I just put it on a sanding disc and uh, took it down so that right. it was flattened. I, I, I have a three and a half year old grandson. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna probably play around with that. Well, they're, they're really quite fun to make actually. And uh, you know, if somebody were to break into my house, I could use it. <laughs> that is awesome i love it impressive for us. Love it's there. like a, a, for after you run out of bullets it's gonna be a lot of someone's ruby <laughs> oh but i'd have to shoot for probably a year and a half before i run out of bullets here <laughs> that's what i was gonna say <laughs> right I, can, I could shoot with the pistol in one hand and the rifle in the other there you go uh, so that, that gives you an idea for something else that you can you can try. That's that's just great, Ruby. That's just great. Thank you. <laughs> so, hey, Ruby, talk to me about the guard there. That's that doesn't look turned. Uh, no, actually, this one, believe it or not, I cut it out on the bandsaw and then ran it both sides through the rotor. Gotcha. And when cool, I did you. the blade on the. Uh, the blade to get the angle here and up here. I made a jig to hold the uh, hold the wood on an angle, and I ran it through this side first, <clears> then <throat> turned it over, did the other side. On your bandsaw? No, on the table saw. On oh, table saw, okay. I love it. I love it. those are great, outstanding. That is you always amazed me, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Well, you can't say I'm boring, I hope. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone's ever met you and said you're boring. All right. Well, at least it gives you an idea one. for something, something new and different to try. All right. <laughs> there okay. you go. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ruby. You're you're welcome. Welcome. All right. Let's get Mr. Phipps. Todd, you're up. Okay. So 
it had been a while since I did much spindle turning. So I, uh, I started making a goblet with like a, uh, three inch stem on it. And, uh, I broke that off. So I <laughs> remounted this thing and made a little, like uh, just a small little glass, you know, a little cup to try to save it. I don't know what this wood is. It's <coughs> taro or something like that. It, it looks like walnut or something, but it's really, really light. And, and it just fell apart when I, uh, put a little too much pressure on that stem. And then uh, I've, I've been making cigar box guitars and I wanted a little bowl to hold like uh, guitar picks and stuff like that. And so I made a, um, a, a, a cigar um, ashtray uh, and then uh, laser engraved in a uh, cigar company stuff on a piece of uh, a slate. There's a, a four inch coaster. And so uh, made that, uh, I'm not a cigar smoker or whatnot, but it, uh, it, it sort of goes with the cigar box guitar, and then I'll just uh, fill it with the, the picks and stuff like that. Cool. And then um, on, on Sunday, and I, I didn't turn this, but uh, we, we've got the Cotton Bowl coming up. I'm from Missouri. I know that uh, there's people on here from Ohio State. Uh -huh. But I woke up and designed this little Christmas ornament. There you go. And then laser engraved and uh, painted it up on, uh, on, uh, and, and then gave because all my family's from Missouri. I, I did about twelve of these and gave them as a bunch of gifts then on Christmas. So uh, very nice. Great yeah. idea. Uh, cool job. It, it lists go. both of the schools, Missouri and Ohio State, but just the Missouri Tiger because you know. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. You can't put a pot leaf on there. <laughs> <laughs> Missouri, I know my mom wouldn't have hung that one on the tree. So, yeah, no worries. That's yeah. good. Yep. All right. Let's go to Jim. Hey, Jim. We got you now. I think you're muted, Jim. You're muted. Well, he's not your muted, but not he doesn't have his doesn't have the mic selected right. Yeah, you're, we can't hear you, Jim. We can't hear you, Jim. Is the plug in? That. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is another one of the weed pots I've been making out of Claro Walnut. I don't have a finish on it yet, but uh, the one I had finish on, I gave it to my barber, so I didn't get to show it. Anyway, that's me for well, that. Very good. Thank you, Jim. All right, let's go across the pond to. What is that anyway? Oh, go, Gary. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, how are you? Well, today I'm making this little bowl. Very cool. Kind of wood. Uh, it's um Zebrano. Oh, so okay. Zebrano. I don't know what you call it over there, over here. It's Zebrano. So this is the bowl that I was messing with today, and I was getting yes. bounce. I remember I was saying the the yes. bowl was bouncing off. Reangled the the grind, and it come out lovely. So yeah, it does. Uh, it's got some beautiful grain on it. Did a nice uh, job on that. And then. I made this. I was just doing some skew work, so just playing with the skew. And I, I actually learned to slow my lathe down, and I was getting less skip back on a finer cut. So it was just a bit of practice. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. Looks so I was good. happy with that. So that's what I've been doing. So I'm mean, a couple good. of months in, so I'm a learner. So here to learn. Right. Well, welcome. We're glad you uh, glad you popped in tonight. <clears throat> All right, let's go to Jack. Jack, you're up. Hit the space bar. Okay, I think we got. I think we got it going now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, on 
uh, Howard King notified me today and reminded me of tonight. And I've watched on my phone uh, a lot, but I've, I've got a new computer and I'm, I don't know anything about it. Nothing. I'm talking about nothing. So y'all will have to bear with me on this. But one of the, one of the gentlemen said something earlier about uh, making him a small soup bowl. Well, I've got an, I've got an ice cream bowl that I made for myself uh, years ago and I'll show it to you. That <laughs> a boy. That a boy. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> a lot of ice cream. That's right. That's an ice. That is my ice cream bowl. That's my kind of bowl. Yeah. Right. Uh, well done. That's well, made out of. Uh, that's made out of a solid piece of sycamore. Okay. It's uh, thirty-one and a half inches across, and five and a half inches deep. And when I put it on the lathe, it weighed 115 pounds. Mm. Wow. And, and it weighs 24 pounds now. Wow. That's a good job. A lot of them kid me. A lot of them kid me about the stuff that I make. And I enjoy making small stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you this tree first. Maybe I won't take up too much of y'all's time. No, you're fine. Yeah, we I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me see if I can. Looks let me good. see if I can, I can see get it. this. Uh, we see it. Oh, yeah. It looks good. You're good. <laughs> okay. Now, this right here, this right here is a piece of rice. Hmm. And right over here, let me see if I can get it to where you can see it. Right there is a birdhouse. There's a birdhouse. They're small. They, they, they just birdhouses. started out real, you know, I started out with a big one, this size here, mm -hmm. and I half sized them all the way around. And, uh, then, and then a small ornament here. Yeah. This is a small ornament. Yeah. Nice. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one. They talk about inside out ornaments. I know y'all have made inside out ornaments. Yeah. Now, this is an inside out ornament and it's got a small silver ball in the center of it. No, man. Oh, my that God. Is a, that is a dime. <laughs> well, yeah. well done, Jack. Incredible. Well, it's, got, it's got a small center, little silver ball inside of it. And that's made exactly like an inside out big ornament. How about that? Well, we so, thought we'd make it tiny shavings. You go tiny. Well, Tommy Hartline used to say at the meeting, he would say, y'all say, y'all say those big shavings, Jack will make something out of them. <laughs> so, so, uh, what tool but, do you uh, use to do that? Okay. I made, I made my own tools. I used some dental lifters yeah. that they pull that they pull teeth with uh sharpen those i used uh i used some i made a uh, uh i can't think of what i made it out of now but i, I made my own tools and uh wow i just i enjoy making small stuff now Can you show us a tool uh, yeah, hang on just a second. I'll show you one of them. I can get it, I think. Maybe you can make micro skews out of Allen keys. Yeah, I was just micro gonna say about this. Allen keys make great miniature tools, he can make all kinds. 
scrapers, skews, gouges. Now that right there has flat. It has flats on it. Hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, you get three point English tool. Yes. And uh, then I used uh, I used some other tools that I made. I I'd have to find those. Uh, but anyway, like I said, this was my first time on here, and uh, the club, uh, North Alabama Wood Turners, they meet here in my shop once a month. And uh, we have a good time. We have about 40 people that shows up, and uh, I have to move everything out and open up a clear place. Everything's on wheels. But if we've got just a second, I want to show, I'm going to take this computer and maybe, maybe I can do this. I want to show Captain Eddie something. I met him a long time ago at a symposium in uh, Georgia. I don't have that and money I, got, I owe you. Do what? I don't have that money I owe you. Oh, well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but in, anyway, <clears throat> I got a set of plans from him. And I made a rose engine lathe. I remember that. Well, look at that. Well, that's, that. that's my rose engine lathe. That looks like Lazilla in color. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had it powder coated. Uh, it took me a, between teaching kids in a machine shop and them yelling my name every, <laughs> you know, and then at lunchtime and after school, I uh, took me about six months to make it. Was it always Mr. Jack that they yelled? Oh, yes. Yeah, they know better to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I retired the, I retired the last day of September this year. And, Congratulations. Uh, hang off my flag. That is beautiful. Beautiful. There you go. <laughs> and oh, I boy. tell folks if I tell folks when they come over here, if they don't like my flag, they can go home. That's right. <laughs> right attitude right there, yeah. buddy. There you go. Yep. No. Right. Okay. That's about all I've got. Thank y'all. All right. Thank Jack, you, Jack. Jack, Jack thank you. you. In. Jack, uh -huh. you, made, you made my day, Jack. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Let's uh let's go see the uh, retired first shirt. Hey, what's <laughs> happening, y'all? So speaking of shirts, we got this bad boy for Christmas. Long live the eighties. Oh, and hair metal yeah, wearing man. Um, <laughs> so let me flip my camera. All right. So there's my two shiny new wheels. All right. One is what I used to have on there already in CBN. Um, now I've got the 80 grit CBN for shaping. Please, if there's anybody who has not made this mistake themselves, please learn from me because CBN wheels are not cheap. There's the one that I had. Why did I have to replace a 180 wheel with another 180 wheel? I don't know if you can see the difference in the coloring, but the center is yeah. a slightly different color. Don't sharpen your carbide blades on your CBN wheel. It doesn't work. No, it sure don't. information out there to tell you that, but I was too dumb to look it up. We so, covered uh, that. Yeah, yeah, but I ruined my wheel before that. Uh, <laughs> now I was lucky enough that I only ruined the center, so I I was still able to sharpen off the edges, but it wasn't as yeah. great. So, anyways, please please learn from my mistakes. Don't put your carbide cutters on your CBN wheels. Ouch. Um, yeah. and then uh, oh yeah, Eddie was talking about the stickers. So boom, there's hey. mine on my leg right there. All right. And I haven't been out in the shop in a while, so I just put a little something on there tonight so I can uh, play around with my cuts. I don't I don't expect this to turn into anything great just because it's all falling apart. I mean, look at how funky that is. But uh, I just needed to, to put the put some few to some wood or put some chisels to the wood and, and learn some stuff. And yeah. uh, my flag's not as big, Jack, but look, I have one too. It all has the same. It, it all has the same meaning. Yeah, buddy. God bless America. Man. Yep. 
And and not that I have anything against all the other countries out there, you know, that's good. This is worldwide wood turners. We 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 accept everyone. But I am a red blooded proud American. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, that's all I got. Great seeing y'all. I'm on Christmas break this week and next week, so I should be here for the whole meeting tonight and, and next Wednesday as well. Okay, sounds good, Doug. See y'all. Bye Take now. Take care. All right, let's go to Mr. Barnes. Hey, Rick. You're muted, Rick. <clears throat> I guess I can just hold the bar down. I got busy this week. Well, Santa Claus treated me well. That's good for you. Been wanting one of these for a long time. My daughter came through when she saw it on my list. But this week I got busy and copied some Bob Grinstead work. And made a card racks. There you go. Yeah. A couple of those. I've sold a few of those lately. And then for Christmas dinner, my wife was going to use a Tupperware bowl for salad. And I said, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. So I had a ch chunk of maple out here. So I turned her a little salad bowl here for her. But uh, oh, no. had a good time this week in the shop, been out every day. Last week, one of the gals was showing a tool that they made. And I added a little something to mine. And that helps the kickback. Just that little pin on there that the first time I used it, I had a couple kickbacks and I got the idea to do that. So that works real well. I wanted to share that with everybody. So I appreciate it. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hope everybody had a great Christmas and be safe. Thank you. Very good. Also, Rick, with that pin on there, you can also use that as a fulcrum when you're turning it on when you're down inside. So exactly. And I've got my. Turner emblem on both of my lathes. They work better, don't they? they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Right on. People come in to visit with me. What's this? So ah. I take an hour and I explain it to them. There you go. <laughs> Appreciate everything that I've ever learned off of this website. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Quite welcome. All right. Let's see. Mr. Hale, where you at? There he is, roll tide. You're muted, Gary. How about ma'am? We got you. We got it. Okay. Got a little mortar and pestle. <laughs> well uh, done. A little bead work. Dolled up the bottom just a little with some sorby tool there. This was turned out of a anybody from Florida. It's a piece of Florida uh, rosewood. Indian rosewood. Not the country India, but not the East, it's a not the East weed India. that grows in Florida. And it's gorgeous wood. And then a uh, Petzl I made out of um, black and white ebony. Made it in the baseball baseball bat style. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. Real heavy bottom. Uh, it's the this is out of a five by it's five by five, five tall, five wide. Give you an well idea done, Gary. of the size. All right. All right, thank you, sir. All right, let's go to uh, let's see, Mr. Corpus Christi here. Oh no. Team, where yeah. you at, buddy? Right here. There we go. All right. I cannot believe our troublemaker, Martin Clarkson, not here tonight. Uh, you know, he stirred up a big mess yesterday. I mean, our last meeting, we had a great yep. uh, discussion on a moon bow and stuff. <coughs> that got me thinking, how in the world are you going to make a cut like that for a moon bow? So I did some little prototypes and uh, 
I ended up with this. Here. <laughs> Nicely well done, Joaquin. And Nicely just, done. Awesome, wow. Joaquin. Awesome. It's just prototype, you know? So, And I kept messing up and trying to cut this part here. On this one here, you can see where my tool messed up. Yeah. What you have to do to get this cut, though, you've got to put your piece on there on a 45. This is a really, this is the first one. It really messed That's up. <laughs> what I was thinking. Offset. But, uh, and so I kept messing up here, trying to cut the inside. Here, a tool it, it, it on a 45. I just couldn't get the tool in there right. Uh, and going around hiding. So I ended up just cutting this on my bandsaw. I do not know that I'll pursue continuing to perfect this and do moon bows. But, uh, <laughs> but you, but you, it was fun it and it was done. a challenge to do. Yeah. You you proved it can be done. done. You got I further than I did on that, Joaquin. Well, it, you know, it's one of them things that you keep, you bring it up, you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and just got to do it. Uh, yeah. No matter how it comes out anyway. It's, I might it's, try it's, to make uh, a bigger one to perfect it later on, but uh, I got other bigger fish to fry now. That was an after hours. Was that an after hours project last week? Yes. Yeah, well, you know, started we in talking England. About, you know, the boat earlier. we saw was carved. Now, how can we turn it on the lathe? And so the only way I could figure about turning and getting that cut, you know, was putting it on a forty-five where you're you're cutting and then you're coming out and you're not cutting anything when it's on a forty-five like that. And so. Uh, this is far I got so far. So, so how how did you hold it in that jig, Joaquin? I use I use the screw. I screwed it in. I've got a a, a, a screw in the back here. You know. Uh huh. Now this was much bigger, and and I I thought I was going to have to use three points, and I ended up uh, I tried two points on this and it broke off because I was trying to cut this like that then do this and cut that inside out with it flat well i didn't have enough wood i could have got uh, got a waste block and glued it on there and uh, where i had it off center for this radius down here you know so well this radius down there at the bottom but uh it was fun i'm just disappointed martin not here next week it was it was something I thought about. I I, I listened to you guys all, last week. Uh, it was something I just kept popping up in my mind. Also, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, it was fun, and if uh, you know, I, who knows? May go to bed tonight and try to get up and do another one tomorrow in a different way or something. But anyway, uh, there you go. Right, you cut your teeth okay, on it. So, so. From, from from center, you went what? Let's say three eighths. And then you went maybe what another three eighths? Is that? I was going to on this one, but I got too rough with it, and it broke. The other center broke off. And this was really a hard piece of wood, and I said, "Look, we got to get some soft wood." And uh, th these turned out a lot better, a lot softer wood. But this hard wood on my first one, it—I uh, don't know what it is. It's not mosquito or ebony, but it was really hard to cut. And start. Uh, start. Start first in in the center, and then move, or start off and then come to the center. I had a a round block like this. Okay, I mean a, 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 a just a round piece. I right. cut it on a forty five. All right, uh -huh. and my chop saw. Then I put this up against the chuck, and so I had a forty five here. And I just started cutting on that 45. You know. Got it. Mm -hmm. So it was in the lathe like this. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. right. Or more like, no, it's more like this. It's like this. And so it's coming around and you're cutting here, starting to cut here and go in. And you can see I went too far. But then, you know, that moon has all kind of different uh, positions. And so, um, but it also turns out egg shape, ellipse shape. Oh, okay. And so I uh, hadn't figured out how to, I started this one out round and uh, then it was skinny here, fat over here. 
and it's so far it's been trial and error. But it's a, it's a good trial and a good error. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to do something else down the road because of it. <laughs> That's a good yeah, I bet you'll figure it out. Yeah, that is. Fun. Right I just wanted. To, I missed y'all this afternoon to show that to Martin, but I thought he'd be here tonight. Yeah, yeah he, he wasn't sure if he was going to make it or not. So it looks yeah. like he he's not going to make it unless he pops in later tonight. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. All right, thanks, Thank Joaquin. You. That's what I got. All right. Go up the let's go up the road here a little bit and see what James has got cracking over here. What you got, James? Uh, I, I won this the other night at our bowl Christmas party. I did not make it, but it was by Gordon Clincho, uh, our club member, and he made this. It's 13 inches high with a walnut top, and the bottom is a box. Yeah, nice. And this was given away at our club uh, Christmas party last week. I got lucky enough to win it. It's an interesting well, hat shape for you. Yes, it is. Uh, it, he did it on um, a couple different axes. Yeah, and uh, it was really neat. It's, it was a centerpiece for our Christmas or yeah Christmas dinner. Uh, so we all liked it, and I thought I'd plug a word in there for him. He'll appreciate it, and that's all I've got tonight. All right. Well, it's great stuff. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Let's uh let's swing back to Captain Eddie here real quick, and then we'll be going to our demonstration for the evening. Wow. Hey, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of stuff popping up tonight, folks. A lot of stuff popping in tonight. Now, good to see uh, some of the members in tonight early. It's one of those holiday weeks. You know that. And that's why the census is down a little bit, because... It's just like me. I forgot it was Wednesday until, you know, the last minute. And I was I was sitting here with the, the boss. And when I pulled the computer out, she said, why is that? You know, Wednesday, it's time to go to the gate, to the tailgate. Time to look at what we have. And I she's extremely impressed by the bowl we just saw a little while ago. That was that was really nice work. And we've seen some good work tonight. We want to see more and get more tips and tricks and see what you come up with, folks. And uh, as, you saw, as you've seen, a couple of members are showing you the stickers we have on the sides of our lace. They do help. They do reduce catches and make it turn and go a little bit better. And we have those available. I'm going to work with Jim Selby out of Florida. He's going to go to the Florida uh, Symposium. I believe it's Florida Symposium. And we're going to send him a bundle of stickers to give out. If you're attending one of these symposiums this year, folks, and you'd like to help pass the word about Worldwide Wood Turners, just like we did last year at a couple of symposiums, we'll help you. You have to contact me to get that done. Just send me the information, tell me when it is, what I can do for you, and we'll take care of you. It's getting the name out so we can get more folks just like you to come join us on the tailgate and have a good time. And we do have a good time. And as you've seen tonight, nothing's unlimited. I mean, Ruby brought out the swords um, to... to uh, to sharpen things up a little bit. Catch that color? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> well, we've seen not everything because we're going to see a great demonstration in a minute and we're going to see more gallery. Don't go away. And a minute ago, we talked about Martin Clarkson. Martin went through a little bit of a problem with losing his shop and now redeveloping his shop. He's got a small one going. Uh, but the project he talked about with Joaquin, now get this, we had. Martin, Joaquin, Dane, and a few others all get together in one spot at one time. That should be illegal, and it might be. Uh, but we all get together with one brain at one time, in one time, thinking about a problem, and you saw the results. Well, that's what you get. And that was after hours. When I talk about after hours, I normally sign off at 9 p.m. Central Line. It's always been a preference. We had to have an ending time um, because something happened a long, long time ago. Man, I don't remember. But we don't end. We just go into overtime. And that's when some of these things really come out of the closet. And you're invited to stay. Don't go away. If you got a problem you want to talk about and you, you want to target somebody, let them know about it. And we'll be here to help you out. 
who have had some really, really wonderful things pop up out of that. So the after hours is not its own program. It's just a unique extension of this meeting. And it's a little bit off the record. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) A little bit off the record. Got to say it a little bit off the record, but it's a fun time for you guys and gals to sit together and talk about this thing. And uh, if it's wrong with the world, we'll try to fix it. So right now we're going to go live and direct to our, our guest demonstrator tonight. And as Dan will tell you in a moment, this is their demonstration. If you want to add something to it, wait to the end of the demonstration. Uh, if you see something you'd like to add to the overall production, wait to the end of the demonstration. If you got questions or comments, put them in a the chat. This is your club. We have, don't have any limits. Just have a little respect. It's sort of like when you went to kindergarten. Go in, be nice, make a friend, come back with a smile. Can't get any simpler than that. So let's go demonstrate. I'm going to turn my other computer so I can watch this up close. Who's on deck? We got Mr. Bob Grinstad on deck. He's got a recorded demonstration he's going to play for us about 30, 35 minutes long. Uh, So like Eddie was saying, if you have any questions or comments about the uh, demonstration, please hold them till the end of the demonstration, because like I said, it's it's a recorded uh, video that Bob's going to be playing for us. He's going to introduce it, talk about it as he sees fit. And I'm going to give him the floor now. So I'm going to mute everybody. So Bob, unmute yourself. And there you go, Bob. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, What I'm going to do tonight is to uh, show you how I made a platter. I've made several platters, but uh, this one has a a special edge on it. This is, uh, I've forgotten what his name is now. Criddle is his last name. And I'll put it in the chat. Uh, It's a Graham Criddle. Graham Criddle. All right, Graham. Yeah, there you go, Graham Criddle. It's the uh, vaporizer that he makes out of a battery charger. And uh, then Molly uh, Winton, I believe, is the lady that uh, has the the actual tip that I made. And all it is is a coil of wire. Um, you can buy the wire on Amazon. This is uh, that nichronium wire or nichrome wire or whatever they call it. But you buy it like a dollar a foot. Uh, this one is an 18 gauge. That's uh, that's where I made uh, my burner out of. She, I think, normally uses uh, smaller gauge stuff, but uh, but this worked real well for me. Uh, the advantage of his burner is that you can burn big stuff. You can make, uh, you know, you even take a leather tool and put a hole in it and wrap this wire around it just so that it'll heat it up like a heating iron, you know, like a uh, curling iron or something. And you heat it up and you can get it hot enough with this uh, with this vaporizer he's got to even burn that. But you can also buy, uh, you can also take it down small. Let me see if I can move this camera a minute. Take it down small enough and uh, buy these tips that you get from uh, Amazon. Uh, you, I think I bought 20 of these different tips, uh, different blades. For, uh, I don't know, $20 or something, or $12. I don't remember exactly what it was. But uh, but his vaporizer, like this right here, uh, you can take a nail head and make your own tools, you know, that your own design that you want. So anyway, that's the advantage of the vaporizer that I can see. It's cheap. It's uh, probably less than $50. It's $40, I think, with the, with the tax to buy all the parts for it as long as you uh, already have an old battery charger sitting around. Uh, I happened to find one. Uh, my neighbor had one, and I got it from him for nothing, so that helps. But anyway, that's what I wanted to show you is how I made this and how it works. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I have made uh, several things using this same tip and uh, enjoy it. So uh, let, me, uh, let me get that started. Yeah, let me do a share fun. screen. And uh, see if we can do this about that. Let's see, is he running yet? No, I don't think so. We got a picture. Of the, yeah. we got a picture of the plate. There we go. Now it's playing. Okay. 
Turn. I have the uh, wood for my platter. Uh, oh, I mean glued up. And saw it out of circle. And drilled a uh, mortise in here. Put an eighth inch mortise to fit my 50 millimeter chuck. Uh, so now I'm ready to uh, turn it. I can drill this on the top on the uh, surface of the platter. So that's going to be the last thing that I do. I'm going to do put this on here and uh, turn it and turn the back of it away. Make me a tendon back here where I can hold it, a tendon, so I can hold it. And uh, get this thing ready to burn. So let me do that. Bob, how thick is that piece of wood? Uh, it's probably about nine inches. And how thick is it? Yeah, nine by three quarter. Okay. You know, three quarter, seven eighths. It's your standard uh, run of the mill mill board. You know, this happens to be beach, but it could be anything.
Okay, so I've got the uh, the back side, bottom of it, finished. I do have a tenon on here so I can hold it. So I'm going to turn it around and uh, finish the, uh, the top of it. Or not finish the top of it, but turn a little bit of the top. I don't want to turn it all the way. But I do have uh, got to put that rim on first. But then we come back and turn it away. I can still use uh, tail stock support just to uh, keep it from uh, trying to come off here. I don't think it would, but uh, just in case, I'm not going to do that. And all I want to do here is to uh, kind of bevel this edge a little bit. I just want it kind of kind of crowned, not a whole lot of heavy crown, but just a little bit, and still leave an edge out here that I can burn. So, uh, so let me get that done. Right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me uh, sand that and we'll be ready to burn. Okay, I'm going to mark some lines on here so I can get close enough down in there. Uh, it won't mean a whole lot right now. It's just more for um, me to come back and say, hey, I'm getting kind of close here. I think that's where I want uh, the center of the stuff to be. About right there. And let me put another one in here in the middle of the place. So now if I can burn down to this, maybe that's wide enough. I think it looked better if it was a little less in the middle. So we'll make it a wide ring out here, something like that. All right, so let me talk a little bit about the uh, about this burner that I made. Uh, they call it a uh, vaporizer. This is a Graham Criddle uh, vaporizer. You can look on YouTube, he has a YouTube channel, and uh, he has a write-up on how to make this. Uh, basically, you get an old uh, battery charger, 
and you take the guts out of it. Uh, everything comes out except for the rectifier. I did leave the thermal fuse in here and, uh, and I left this switch transformer. Uh, this one doesn't do anything. This, this does a high and a low voltage. Uh, I don't need to get off a low. There's plenty of voltage in here or plenty of current. I did put a, uh, his, it, and even his design, he puts a uh, light dimmer over here, just a regular 110 light dimmer. And uh, then I bought the, the uh, little terminals to go on here and uh, wired it all up, but uh, but it works great. The, uh, the actual pin, and again, this is kind of like his design. Uh, Molly Winton's got some of these too. But uh, Molly Winton is known for this little burner up here. Uh, she takes, uh, this is 18 gauge. I think she uses smaller gauge wire, but this is, uh, uh, what is it, nichronium wire. You get it on uh, Amazon. Uh, and you take it and hold it and you wrap it around the nail or you wrap it around the drill bit. Anything that you can wrap it around. The little terminal strips uh, let me get that here. Okay, so the, the Nikron wire, Nikron, Nikron, anyway, Nikron wire is about a dollar a foot. You can buy it uh, sometimes cheaper in a bundle or something, but you don't need a whole lot. All you need is about uh, three inches to do this. So you can make a lot of them out of 10 foot, but it was $10. Uh, that I bought the wire. I had to pay uh, $2.98 or something like that for this terminal strip. This is, they call it a European terminal strip. Uh, so you actually take it all apart and just pull the uh, little inserts out, the little metal inserts, and use that to uh, terminate everything. I have a, uh, a uh, raisin rod in here. So it's a one eighth inch of raisin rod and I've cut little short pieces. And that's what I have running inside this handle. This is a three quarter inch piece of PVC. And uh, I don't know if it's better down there or not, but piece of PVC, I did put some vent holes in it you know, so it would vent. I haven't noticed this getting hot. Uh, this definitely gets hot. Uh, but three quarter inch is plenty big. His, I think, was a bigger. Graham's, I think, was bigger than that, but uh, three quarter inch or half inch. That's half inch, not three quarters. So a half inch, it was plenty of big for what I wanted. Um, but anyway, that's about it. I did buy some uh, heavy gauge wire. I think I forgot what this was. Uh, probably an 18 uh, gauge wire. So I can hook it up to this. I was going to use banana clips and decided this is just as well just to use a spade lug, uh, a little spade lug. And uh, and that works just as well. So that's what I'm going to do. It's, it's easier. I, I did buy the others, but uh, you don't need that. You don't need a banana clip. And uh, so this thing uh, turns on and doesn't crank. It you can crank up way up here, but I don't even get close to that. Uh, I take it less than a quarter of a way, and that's plenty hot. Now, the good thing about this, it only costs like $35 or less than $40 to make this or to convert this to, uh, to this vaporizer. They call it a vaporizer because when it gets hot, it does, it just burns, it just smokes everywhere. But, uh, I have had it go off a couple of times, you know, because of the thermal fuse in here and, and not a problem. You just let it cool off and it'll click back and you can do it again. Um, so let me, uh, let me kind of show you what this thing does. Let
I did leave the amp meter in it, so I can see that it's uh, putting out something. Uh, let's crank it up here and get it hot. And then we'll start. And again, I've got it uh, less than a fourth of the way. And uh, let me get red hot here in a minute. And there's not a problem yet. You know, there's no really lag in here to too much. But all you're doing is burning. And you just come up with some type of a pattern that you want on here and uh, kind of go from there. But it does a real good job at burning. You can uh, you can also turn this thing down. You know, if you just want to get into biography, let me stop here, I'm losing count. But uh, if you just want to get into biography, you can put the little tools. I bought a, a set for, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 tools for $11, maybe 20 tools. I forgot what it was on Amazon. But uh, they'll also fit in here. It's just a screw terminal, so you uh, screw them and put them in here. And it does turn down well enough to use those. So you can actually do biography with this without having to go out and buy a $250 razor tip. I've got one over here, but he's not strong enough to do this type of a burn. Well, that's why I made this but uh, but you don't need to buy that two hundred and fifty dollar uh, razor tip outfit. This works just fine, uh, even for the smaller tip. So let me go ahead and finish this and come up with some design to go around here, and uh, we'll go from there. It does put off a lot of smoke. When I've done that, I've used a small fan to blow the smoke away from me. Yeah, that's what I was doing here, too. I did do a save. I uh, when I first started, I was showing you at the top of this and showing. Uh, anyway, I have uh, finished burning it, and now all I need to do is uh, go ahead and turn out the. Well, I need to spray it first. I'm gonna spray it with uh, black lacquer, uh, so it is a uniform black everywhere. And uh, just the uh, make sure the edges and the, this right here is covered. Uh, the back I'm going to leave alone. I'll come back and finish this back in a minute. But uh, before I do that, I'll turn this out. So I'll paint it black, turn this out, maybe put a little edge on this. I'm not sure what I want to do. And uh, it's almost done. All right, so I have uh, black lacquer painted on here. 
And so I'm going to trim this out and make a bowl out of this. And maybe I'll probably just go ahead and trim that edge just a little bit, just to make it show up better. But, uh, but let me do that. With my screw up number two. <laughs> Voila, all gone.
Okay, so I've got the front finish and uh, coming back and going to do this, uh, the back, and I take this tenon out that I made. And I just take it down to a small piece down here, and uh, then I'm going to grind that out. A little grinder. Put a little V grooves in it just to uh, kind of dress up the bottom a little bit. Doesn't have to be matte. And I can't get way out here because the edge is wobbling a little bit. So I don't want to go too far. But I think that's about it. Okay, so I can take that little uh, deal out, just grind that out, and uh, it should be fine. But that would be my uh, my plate. All right, I'm going to use uh, my Merlin two. If you can see that, it has a, a coarse uh, blade on it, uh, kind of like a cut saw, but it's uh, very coarse just to take that center out. And then I'll come back and sand that a little bit. Started out with 80 grit. And I'm uh, just gonna go through the grits here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, that tip is a uh, 164th of an inch tip with the smallest tip that razor tip makes. And that's what I like to sign with. So I just uh, find a spot on here and uh, just uh, start trying to sign it. Okay, that's it, guys. So, uh, so I've got it finished. Uh, my design opportunity, uh, redesign opportunity turned out fine.
But uh, with this in my platter, I did put some uh, rosettes in here, some some uh, different things. Uh, finished the back of it, signed it, and uh, it is ready to go. So I think it turned out pretty good. Y'all uh, take a look at it. But this is all burned, uh, dished out, and I finished it with uh, Krylon. That uh, triple thick uh, Krylon. I couldn't buff it. You know, you can't buff this out because it's so rough. So, uh, so I just put a uh, slick finish on it, glossy finish. But, uh, but that's it. Thanks, guys. Well done, Bob. All right. Let me see if I can. Yeah, you stopped it. All right, good. Yep. That was it, guys. Just wanted to show you the uh, vaporizer and uh, tell you that you could use the small tips, too. You don't have to go out and pay a lot of money for to get into biography if you don't want to. So, uh, But it turned out pretty good. Any it questions? turned out very nice. It turned out excellent. Not it turned good. out real, real good, Bob. All right. Well, thanks. Hey, Bob, could you restate the uh, size of uh, of the plank and, and the type of wood it was again? That's beach. And uh, it was probably about a nine inch blank. Uh, okay. Three quarter inch, seven eighths inch thick. It's just your standard, uh, you know, wood that's about uh, nine inches across here. And uh, three quarter inch thick. Uh, it could be, you know, you could turn it down, but you don't, you know, you don't have to. It's just going to, it's more for decoration than anything. Right. So, uh, so it doesn't have to be super thin. Uh, but I did have two uh, saves. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but uh, when I first burnt these, when I was showing you, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, the pattern. And I didn't like the pattern that I had on this first outside rim at first. So I did put it back up there and turn it away. And I turned it back down again and then came up with uh, this pattern that's on it now. And uh, and I like that real well. It's, it's more like a uh, basket weave pattern. And, yeah. and it turns No out. mistakes, they're all opportunities. That's it, it's just another opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I like you, speed. Yeah, and then you, of course you saw the other one where it skated yep. on me. Uh, so I just came back and took that away and put a bead in there. And it kind of dresses it up, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, it didn't hurt it at all. No, it looks great. All right. Well, thanks, Very guys. Nice. But yeah, it's just uh, you can see where it's glued together here, but it's just you know the two different grains go in the different directions. But, uh, but I think it turned out fine. Definitely. Anyone else have any questions or comments for Bob on this? Now, what gauge wire did you use on that particular burning there? This one, I had an 18 gauge uh, wire. And like I said, Molly uses smaller stuff. I think hers is more like 22. Mm. But uh, I wanted it coarse looking. I wanted it to be a large burn. And uh, so the 18 gauge turned out real well. All right. How long did it take to burn it? Uh, not that long, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah. It, it goes fast. Yeah. Yep. If you, if you choose to make to use a smaller gauge wire, if that's what you have, for instance, then you just make the coil. You use the larger nail and make the coil a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes less power to make a smaller gauge wire hot. Yeah. Or smaller gauge, you know, thinner wire is what I'm talking about. So if you use like 22 gauge like Molly Winton does, you just use a bigger nail to make a bigger coil. And, and it's just things are tightly woven. And, you know, but Bob's right. I mean, using a big, larger, larger gauge wire, you get a bigger coil, you know, thicker, thicker strands, if you will. Thicker strand, it just shows up better. You know, if you use the thinner stuff, then sometimes you have to kind of look at it close to see the actual coil burn, you know, where it's burned. Uh, this shows up a little more pronounced, I guess. Just a quick tip on the uh, nichrome wire. Mm -hmm. You can go to a heating, heating and air place that takes out old units and the emergency strip heat on the top of a unit, 
Mm-hmm. That coal, that coal in there is nichrome wire, and there's probably 200 feet in there. And all you got to do is just take it out, and you can put one end in a vise, wrap a screwdriver around a, another piece, and just jerk it, and it'll straighten it out. <laughs> is it not brittle at that point, or or because I know if you get it too hot uh, and too many times, then it does get brittle. So. No, uh, uh-uh. it's not. No, it don't get brittle. Okay, good. And it so, might not cost you anything. Sure. I'm I'm in for cheap, so. <laughs> this is wire that's in a toaster, so if you got an old toaster, you can take the wire out of that too. So. Yeah, it's same stuff. Yep. But for ten dollars, I mean, it's not it's not expensive. It's not uh, you're gonna break the bank doing it. So. We have a question in, uh, for the group. Has anyone tried doing a burning like that with a laser? No, not here. Well, it, it takes a lot longer to do with the laser than it does with the Molly Whitten coil. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, the same effect. Those coils, those coils, you can turn them up until they're, until they're glowing red hot like Bob did, and you can just zip right through it. So. Uh, do I typically move the headstock? Yeah, yeah it's, it's just because of what I have. I have a shop smith, and the shop stiff moves, not the tailstock. You know, in your typical lathe world, all the lathes, you crank that tailstock in. And so it's moving the tailstock in up against the uh, up against your uh, priest that you're working on. And, and in mine, in my world, it walks the, op- the opposite direction. But it still works. I mean, it's still the um, right. same, same process. Yeah, still turning it around. Yeah. All right, very good. Once again, Bob, I appreciate it. That was an excellent demo. All right, thanks. All right, let's go back to Captain Eddie. Captain Eddie. I like some of the technique that I saw, including the use of that scraper that flattened out that bottom. That is an underused, underrated tool because if you see a lot of plates and bowls done by novice turners, there's the dimple or the hiccup when you come across. And Bob's, you wouldn't see that because he took the scraper, softer, smoother, easier to manage cut, and it, it does do slicing. It does a nice slicing. So that was one of the techniques you saw. I like that burning with the wire. Uh, it's my asked about uh, can you do it with a laser you will not get the same effect uh it's two totally different types of embellishment um and and what bob's got there is more traditional and original than you'd see with laser (coughs) decorated tools um but this made it interesting he showed you the the blackout on it and from the back and, and surprisingly when Somebody asked how thick that piece was, and he said three quarters or seven eighths of an inch. A whole lot of us was thinking, no, no, he's. We saw the finished piece. That he's got to have more meat and potatoes than that before he gets started. Nope, that was it because of control what he was doing. He put a a, a spindle a, a spigot on it to work with it. Now, if you didn't want to lose that wood back there, you could always put a glue block on and start from a glue block and remove the block, but. Depends on what you're working with and the thickness of it. You know your best friend when you're going to lay out one of those? Piece of graph paper. Draw it out first. It's a whole lot easier than going, oops, am I too thin? Can I read the paper through it? Uh, does it flex? You know, that's, you know, if you draw it out first, you got a better chance of making it work. You're tuned in to WorldWideWoodTurners.org. This is a demonstration hosted by one of our members. If you'd like to do a demonstration for us or have something you'd like to show us, all you have to do is let us know. Go to chat and tell us that. And if you've got some secrets that you came up with or developed or an idea, just like Bob did. And Bob actually showed you how to create a tool. Now, this is not the, the fractal burning thing with putting the electrodes on it and watching the power go through it. I know some folks might have cringed a little bit. He's making the tool that will do that. No, no, that's not what he came up with. What he came up with is a wire burning rig which is a, a pyro, a pyro. 
um, and it, it, they are safe. But you use the use of caution when you do it. Whatever you modify, make sure you keep yourself in mind where electrical shocks can still happen, especially when you go into a kit and start taking things out. Don't take out the safeties, okay? Great demo. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to more from our members. And we'll have more gal more gallery tonight. It's just a few minutes after 8 o'clock Central Time. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. And if you're just joining us tonight, welcome. And if you got something to add to the program, jump right in. If you'd like to show something, let us know. And if we can be of service, talk to us. Dane, what's up next? Well, we're gonna we're gonna swing back to Ruby. She's got something to add on about swords here. Um, and she's gonna fill up some time for me while I go in and uh take care of the insulin shop for the little kitty cat. All right, what you got, little Ruby? Ruby, talk to us. I can see you. Hey, I'm there right here. Are. I got you. Yeah, I got it. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, if you make a sword, you have to make a shield to go with it. Oh, so I knew this was, was coming. One that I made. Oh no! <laughs> uh, nice. That's pretty. I pyrographed <laughs> it out of it's out of oak. But the thing that I really wanted to show you about this because you can use it on your other parts of your wood turning. You see how light colored this is here? Mm -hmm. How almost white it is? That's from using two part wood bleach on the oak directly. I textured it first just with a Dremel tool and a little round bit. And then I, because I pyrographed this, it gave it a line to stop the spread of the two part um, wood bleach. So it wouldn't bleed, so it wouldn't bleed. Right. Uh huh. But it, it's it's another effect you can get if you're say using um, well oak for example. Sure, sure. That looks good. I there aren't any words to say. <laughs> that is. Well, at least I hope it gives you a couple of ideas of things. <laughs> oh you my do. god! How oh do you get the color for the crown? Was that just? Uh, that's looked, uh, that's just. Um, Red acrylic paint. I know the crown itself, not the lion. Up uh, at the you mean these lines? No, the no, crown. The crown. Up at the, the top. The crown on top. Oh, the crown. Yeah. Yeah, that's just one of those little jewels that you can pick up at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I just no, glued I... it on top. Yeah, no, I see it now. It looks like you used gold leaf, maybe, or gold yeah. paint. Now that I look at it close, yes, I did use gold leaf on that. <laughs> okay, but that looks good. I like that, Ruby. It goes. It goes with that big sword. Well, it does, and I well, don't have to worry about getting into a a battle or anything. <laughs> no. Will, will you be showing us the ship next week? <laughs> uh, no. Really? But I, I noticed Steve said, why stop there? Show us the suit of armor made from oak. Well, actually, when I was a little kid and going out for Halloween, where I grew up, we always had snow or hail on Halloween because I grew up way up north. And uh, the one year I went, went, I went out for Halloween, I think I was the only kid out because I had made an entire suit of armor out of um, cardboard. <laughs> it took me about two months to uh, collect all of the cardboard and uh, tape and glue it all up and then paint it so that I had the suit. Are you going to make a scabbard for that sword? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't done any leather work recently. Um, actually, that's more the kind that you would carry in a holster just over the back of your uh, shoulder. Hmm. It's a little too long for uh, just a scabbard. The short one might work for a scabbard. Mm -hmm. but that's that tall good. guy. Hey, 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 Ruby, there's there aren't any words to describe how beautiful that is. I know really? it looks. Well, it's, thank it's, you. That's beautiful. I mean, that that's just beautiful. Did you hand draw that on there, or do you use a pentagram? Well, I hand drew it. Well, that's good. You did right. good. Right. Okay, now let's see the bottom. Let's see the bottom. 
<laughs> no, not on the back side. I'm, I'm just goofing with you. Well, I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to put a handle on the back side. Maybe so you just it was, want to hang it. It was just, let's see, one, two, three, four, five boards across that I glued together. Mm -hmm. Probably we just want to hang it on the wall with the. Yeah, uh, with yeah. the I would say a wall. Well, you know, it's actually very heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not bad. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I figured it was heavy with the oak. There's two ways to put handholds on the back, right? And you might want to put a cross beam because maybe if it takes some, it takes direct abuse, some of those boards might, you know, break along the seams. So I don't know. <laughs> You know, well, maybe some I, I, glued, I glued them pretty solidly, so they, I didn't use uh, crazy glue or anything. But you, <laughs> no, see, no. you see where this turning can take you into whole different fields and along different paths? Yeah. Ruby, it, all, it all started with my neighbor that I taught how to turn coming over and saying, how can I make a sword? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like to do different things, so that's great. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So funny. So great. Well, thank you very much. That's beautiful. But I, I did want to show you this this technique of lightening the oak with the two part uh, um, um, bleach. Wood bleach, yeah. Yeah, and you can pick that up at, at any uh, hardware store. Mm hmm. That that oxycillin or something like that. I don't I don't remember a name on it. It was just two part wood bleach. It, it just said wood bleach, and um, two part and went from there. Oxalic acid. There you go. That's what it is. So okay. so Ruby. Okay. So you you prepped. What did did you want? Did you go from the inside out? Did you draw the 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 picture first and then? Um, I mean, I'm looking at so much detail. Okay, I yeah, started with drawing, drawing this edge because I knew approximately where it was. So right. what I did was I held my pencil basically like this and kept my finger along the edge and then just went down. Right, now I'm talking about uh, the, the lion. So um, was the lion first? Yeah, then I drew him in the middle. Um, I ha I found a picture of one, and I just sort of drew. Started out, I drew drew this part first, and then the mane. And then I liked the claws. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at is the claws. So much detail. So that's really the, the the bleach part. It you don't have lines from the edging for the bleach going through the. Uh, lion either so the lion had to be first and then the yeah well as, as long as you have <laughs> you, as long as you've burnt the outside of that edge then the bleach doesn't um, go through to the other part yeah that's just beautiful but take this what i've done with this and say you've taken a vase now you could put like a design like this on the on the side of the vase or along a top edge or a border or something mm -hmm. and it's just another way to enhance your work yeah this is just kindling you hadn't started the fire yet you just you just got the kindling out because this is a possibility this is what i talked spoke about earlier this is technique and this is gorgeous drink it down and you could put that whole picture on a vase yes you could sure or a picture of anything else do a vase and put some some roses on the outside of it you're on you are you're only limited by the thing on top of your head called That's your brain right you're limited ruby, by did, your imagination ruby did you show something before the shield or is, is it just the shield uh well before the shield i showed the two swords that i made right right at the beginning of the program okay yep I was just playing catch up now that I'm back from doing the, the shot for the cat. Yeah, Steve says that in a couple more years, I might be good at this wood stuff. 
Well, <laughs> I, I might catch up to you one day, uh, Steve. So, yeah, the lion rampant is on the royal flag of Scotland. And being as hell, my mother was from Dundee, Scotland. Uh, there was a connection there. Thought it looked familiar. So look good, fantastic piece of work, Ruby. Fantastic piece of work, and you shared a lot of technique on that. That's you just put some really, you've thrown some some toys out for us to play with. You have good, and I'm challenging you, Eddie. To Me? do something using one or two of those techniques. And everybody heard it. All right, Ruby, I got your challenge, lady. I got you. Because right, you I won't switch your gut, you're teasing I'll my you, brain, I'll you, lady. I'll give you until the new year to come up with something, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. Which, <laughs> new year? which, which one are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> which year? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Okay. Details. Dear. Details are critical. <laughs> Dane, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, maybe they want to see somebody else now. <laughs> yeah, I, I took you off spotlight, sir. Thank you for, for ad-libbing for me there. I much appreciate it. So if anybody else has got anything for uh, show and tell, throw it here in the chat. I've got something if a picture on my phone shows up. This who is who is this? That's Craig. Craig. Yeah. Craig. All right. I don't know if this will show up well or not. Uh, uh it's a couple of lamp bases that I, I made for my brother. I made them out of uh uh cedar. They were actually cedar fence boards. And I don't think it does well with that camera. No, it's kind of flipping back on you. Yeah, yeah ghosting out. But uh, all actually, what it was was just some uh, some cedar fence boards that he bought and then glued together and brought them to me when he was visiting. And I, when he left, he left that with me and. Uh, made the two lamp bases, and that was kind of a challenge because most of my stuff is all one piece originals, and I had to make these uh, pretty close to identical. And seed required good cutting and sharp tools. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure you glue it really well because he, he did have, if, if it came through on the camera, I would have shown it, but he had a part that didn't glue really well so when i was on the lathe piece flew off i was wearing my leather and everything else uh but i was able to re-glue it uh, sand it down a little bit re-glue it and uh strap it for a couple days and was able to salvage the the lamps uh, lamp base right on good for you thank you all right thanks craig all right, let's go with Kelly. Hey, Kelly. All right, so I got to do a uh, um, share screen. And that's something I made for my wife for uh, Christmas. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I made it on Christmas morning before she woke up. Because I didn't even shop on Christmas Eve like most guys do. <laughs> Man, that's beautiful. That feels, that feels really pretty. What are mm -hmm. what are the woods that you used? Uh, let me go back. That's a Claro Walnut. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not Claro Walnut. That's a uh, Ambrosia Maple Burl, and that's uh, Ebony, African Ebony. Well, that's yes. the top of that is. Especially the one, about one inch down. I like how you did that. And then uh, yesterday, I well, no, I'm sorry, today. I, this is something that you can find that Jim Duxbury makes. He actually he has an article in uh, Wood Turning. I, I can tell you what issue it is. I'll post it in the chat later on. 
not not to make what I'm about to show you, but to, to use this technique right here. Um, and he may he, he has an article in there about making bases. And so you can see the layouts, you know, pretty pretty weird. Takes forever. And uh this is what I came up with whenever I was yeah, there. Yeah. that's from from the from this point to that point on the other end is five feet. And so oh, wow. Wow. five foot wall. It's not exactly one hundred percent done yet. I still have to attach attach these two together and go hang it in the hang it somewhere. Hell, I don't know where I got five feet empty, but gotta put it up somewhere. <laughs> and that, that's uh that is uh that red and orange and yellow. What's that stuff called? Uh um, Starts the seed, whatever wood that, that is that starts the seed, it's got the red and the yellows. Um, I'll think about it in a minute. And that that's a piece of maple in the middle of it. Canary. Alpha? Canary? Yeah, canary wood. That's it. So that's can canary wood. You can't you can't really pick it up in this picture because I'm of course I'm standing way up and it is five feet tall, but and whenever it's it, right in front of you, you can see like a little bit of the the red and the yellow kind of tones, you know. No, hey, hey, Kelly. Now, yeah. if 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 you would have started off, um, okay, your your, your piece of wood, um, what was it, uh, twenty four inches, or what was it that that you that you had your lines drawn on? I don't know, probably like thirty inches or so, because that's okay, a okay. five foot span. So. Well, if if you did it, my question is: if if you would have done it smaller, do you think you would get the same effect? Yeah, I did one smaller uh, yesterday, but it's already gone. So yeah, you can do them. You can do them smaller. Okay, that's pretty. I mean, that's a great idea. Beautiful. Thanks. Great job, Kelly. Thanks, dude. All right, let's go to, let's see, Joaquin, you still on here? Joaquin with a J? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I buggered out already. Well, let's see. Al, you're still here, right? Sure, I'm here. Hello. All right, we got you. Uh, like I was saying earlier, um, this is uh, one of Phil Anderson's projects. He 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 called it uh, his bad dream bull. <laughs> and it's a bull and a bull served on a platter. But uh, I I I, I messaged him. And I said I was going to show this tonight. I don't know. If, and, and I asked him, "Hey, wait, be on." But that was something that Phil Anderson uh, did in uh I liked it. It's Live really it. unique. It's it's something. I mean, he's he's a he's a very good uh, uh, entertainer, also. A bowl. Um, pardon. A bowl. A bowl. A bowl yeah. yeah, yeah. A a a bowl in a bowl served on a platter. Uh, it's just good. It's just goofy, goofy around, goofy around stuff. Now, Ruby, you have you have me going down such a a rabbit hole as you know. We're all down this rabbit hole, and you know, back in uh, oh, a couple months, how you talked about uh, okay, so I could just go and get any anything and make something out of it if I wanted to. It's, that's uh, Gary the ghost. He looks great. <laughs> no, no, wait. It gets goofy. It gets goofier. Here's Here's the other rabbit hole that you had me going down. Okay, that's maybe two inches or three inches. Now I'm at a point where, hey, look, I, you can do something with a, maybe an inch and a half. You know, okay. okay well, you can make a whole set of uh, aliens that way. Where I'm going with this is... <laughs> you don't have any scrap wood left. <laughs> the only thing left of that tree I'm throwing away are leaves. For now on, all because of you. I mean, yeah. To I and I found 
Now, I, there's there's smaller smaller size eyes that I could put on a on an inch and a half uh, piece of piece of limber, and oh, I just went and broke his arm off. But anyway, <laughs> now no, I can't throw anything away. Now, I, I go down the whole. Now limber. you can piece now you off. can make a sling and put the arm in the sling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many crazy things. Captain, thank you so much. I wish uh, you, I wish everybody here just a great Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sword. Thank you, Al. Can't well, wait to see Sword and Shield for your grandson. Oh, my God. <laughs> All the time I was thinking, I, I, I think we also need a, a, a Viking hat. We need a helmet. So I was thinking, all the time she was talking, I was thinking about a helmet also. <laughs> there you go. Turn a big egg, cut it in half. Yeah, we'll, all work, the way we'll work on that in the new year. I I, I like what you said, uh, Cap. Um, as the ball hey. turn or as the ball drops, stand on your left leg and start the new year on your right foot. That's right. Get off her own right foot. I like yeah. that. Everybody's, uh, everybody's going to hear it. Good. Yeah. Put it on Facebook. It'll live forever. Well, anyway, thank well, you so much. Like I said, I hope everyone has a great year. Yeah, you too, Al. We'll, we'll see you next year, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh. I hope so. We've right. seen thank some you, great man. artwork here tonight. And folks, if you've seen that great artwork, we're going to see something from Bob in just a minute. Uh, you're seeing it here in the meeting, but let's make it a little more permanent. Send us a photograph of that. Remember the rule about the 300 DPI prints the best for us, and then send it on to editor, editor at worldwidewoodturners.org. And that's going to be the email and the address for you to send photographs to our newsletter. And the first edition comes out next week. But we have, like I said, first edition, because boy, we've got room for a lot more. And we're looking to see this. I've just seen five or six pieces that will be excellent artwork for the next edition. And I know Joaquin's sitting around. He, I think he had a call in the evening. But he's ready to go. He's waiting for your stuff. It's photographs, articles, tips, tricks, ideas, all that in your newsletter. Your, I didn't say the club newsletter. I said your newsletter because that's what it is. So we're going to see. Bob, what do you got to show us tonight? I got uh, I got some more of these uh, stands. I don't know if y'all like these or not, but uh, but I enjoy making them. They make uh, pretty gifts, you know, when you put an ornament on them. And uh, there's my little uh, whoops, got him turned around wrong here. My little uh, birdhouse ornament. Uh, with oh, little... Okay. Did yeah. we see that demonstrated by Trey? Trey. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's on it's on our website. The the video on how to do that is on our website. Yep, it could be. I, yep, uh, it didn't where I it didn't where I got it, but I think he does have one out there. He did do one for us. So yes, that's great. Yeah. But uh, but it is uh, these are easy to do, and uh, it may uh, make good gifts with your ornaments. Get my little bird back around there. Yeah. Just so you know, the ones you buy in the catalogs first, folks, they don't come out the right height. If you make your own, they come out the right height. That's it. <laughs> all right, that's it, guys. That's what I was working on all week, just fiddling with this. This was cedar. Uh, it makes pretty colors. And, uh, of course, nearly anything does. Uh, you know, oak turns out real well, too. So, Well done. Looks good. Thank you, Bob. All right, let's go to Mr. Bundy. Hey, Charlie? Yes, sir. I had a problem. I I like making segmented stuff, but I have a habit of making too many rings. So I had this big pile of rings, all different shapes and sizes. I thought I was the only one that did that. And the wife goes, I'd like a bowl to put pine cones in for and sets to come out. I said, I think I know what to do with my segments. It's now there's splits and hole the holes I drilled, but 
some of them splits are because things didn't line up, but I left them because mm -hmm. for the scent to come out. There, there's, I have no way of knowing what exactly kind of what I know. There's maple, oak, and cedar in it, probably some birch. After that, I don't have a clue. <laughs> That's pretty but cool. I just glued them up and turned them down. It's full of pine cones, so I can't show the inside. But there's the bottom. Good job, Charlie. That's neat. I'm looking through my personal gallery right now. I don't see the one I've got that same thing. I called it Mishmash. It was a bunch yep. of rings sitting back there, flattened them out and put them together, and it did the same. It it, it came out cool. That's all I had for today. And the pine cones are inside for what? Yeah, there's there's pine this cones in it. Is it? You put pine cones in it, and then what? You spray scenting on it. Oh, okay, for uh, like a potpourri. It's a, okay. it's, okay. it's yeah, it's it's a form yeah. of potpourri. Okay, got it. Very cool. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Scrolling up to see if I missed anyone. It doesn't look like we have anybody up for uh, gallery items. Anybody have a tip or trick they'd uh, like to show? Nice. I can't show Anyone? one, but I could describe one to you. Describe one? Yeah. Des describe away. Well, uh, the other day, my favorite pair of corduroy pants... Um, they bit the dust. I got them out of the wash and there were just too many pieces. So what I did was I cut the legs off and I found that I can take those legs and use them to slide a bowl or something in when I'm packing them away in the boxes to take somewhere. And if your wife, daughter, or whoever has, or yourself have flannel pajamas, the bottoms of those, the legs from those work just as well for making uh, covers for your bowls when you're packing them. Huh. Sure. Way to utilize so see, you can't even throw away your clothes when they wear out. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, good. You could, also, you could also use your old clothing for, uh, for uh, that technique that was shown, I don't know how many months ago, where they were gluing up the fabric yes. and I don't remember yes. what that stuff was, but uh, yeah, I, somebody, somebody in my friends list is doing that too. So. <laughs> well, another, another thing that I do is like when I break a bandsaw blade, I take the blade and I cut it to anywhere from 12 to 18 inches long. And then I bend them into a V. And if you sit them down with the points up, uh, you, when you put finish on your piece, you can just set them on that V and it'll hold them off the ground. And uh, that works really well as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can't throw your old bandsaw blades away anymore either. Yeah, I saved mine so I can heat it up, pound it all into one piece of metal. All right, let's 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 see. We got a new gallery item just popped in. Roger, we got you now. You're muted. All right. Got a piece here that my, my grandkids are visiting from California. And this is one that a, my eight-year-old grandson made. Oh. Of course, I helped him. But. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. You got him hooked now. Yeah, keep him going. What's that? Keep him going. Keep him on that leg. Well, <clears throat> he could only work about 15 minutes at a time and then stop. <laughs> and yes. then another 15 minutes. And but sounds like me. I got an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
just a nice little piece of walnut. So yeah, right. Give it's got some a beautiful, beautiful shape to it. Yeah, fantastic form. He, he did a really nice job. Well, I, I did pretty much shape the outside of it before he started turning, and then he did the inside. And really? I've got a he uh, hollowed it. He hollowed it. You let you left him the hard part, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I I gave him I set my lathe up with a uh, a simple hollowing system, you know. The, oh, okay. So there was very little control needed. So, but hey, you had him do it. Yeah. I had him do it. Yeah, yes, you, that's good. Let him turn a top or two. He'll he'll get used to playing with some. <laughs> all, all it takes is seeing the chips. That's, that's right. It. And great memories you're creating for him too. Yeah, I was just Jeez. thinking the same thing. Well, my son's Thanks, trying Roger. to turn. My son's trying to turn a uh, piece of ash. It's all cracking on him, so I filled it, a lot of one of them up with uh, epoxy, and we'll see if we can get it finished tomorrow. Oh, okay, good luck on that. Well, if you're trying to give him a challenge, give him some pine or Douglas fir. Uh, my son's turned before, but he's never turned anything like this ash is. It's so porous and it's. it's That's why I mentioned Douglas fir because it's it's nasty. Yeah, nasty spongy stuff. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's uh, uh we'll work on it tomorrow and finish it. Sounds good, Roger. The Thank next you. week I've got three of my other grandkids that want to turn, so <laughs> oh, there job. you go. Huh? Fun. Yeah. There you go. Great job. And then Thank after you. that, they're then they're gonna go, go back go back to school after the first of January. Then they're gonna say, you know what? I did this with my grandpa, and then they're gonna be like, Oh, I want one. Can you show me how to? <laughs> Well, the one grandson next week, he's actually turned before. He's made a couple pins, a wand, uh, actually a, a drinking cup has a stainless insert in it. Oh, okay. wow. So he's, he's 16 now, but that was like eight years ago that he made that cup. Once you get them started and they're doing it right, you 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 you've done you have done a, a marvelous job. Just getting them started and they get them to do it right. That's the marvelous job. Thank and you. Can, they'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Roger. It'll be instilled. So doing your part. Very good. All right, let's roll back over to the Alabama and see how Gary's doing here. Oh. <laughs> Am I you can hear me? We got yeah. you. Okay. I was just out in the shop today. I've got a friend that needs about 20 or 25 little tea lights. And I told him, I said, well, I've got some pine. He said, it doesn't matter what it is. We're going to paint them. So they're going to do some artwork on them. So I tried to see that? how fast I could knock out a tea light. And uh, in a couple of minutes, I knocked that, that out. So that was a little pine two by four. That's <laughs> good. That's a go. building project. And, and, and with that, you are now the first one on the two by four club for 2024. Oh, okay. So your name will be added to the list. Anybody else that wants to make a project out of a, out of a, some construction grade pine two by four? Due to turning, show it off, and your name can be in the, the illustrious two by four club. Same with all the other little little clubs well, that we have, the Birdhouse Club, and there's several others. We we've cleaned them all off uh, for the prior submissions, and we're starting fresh with a new list for going forward for 2024. And it's not a joke thing because turning out building materials will teach you how to use your tools a little better. You're gonna learn how to, sh to sharpen up, make slicing cuts. Um, how to handle your tools. It's it's all in technique. And this all started as sort of a joke 200 meetings ago, and it, it's no joke. 
Uh, if you really want to try, give them one to spin. And that's what we talked about earlier when you're testing yeah. tools and playing with it. You can do a lot of things with good wood and good sharp tools. But if you have wood that doesn't really work for you, you better have great tools and some really sharp tools and practice your technique in order to get in there. And our two by four club does just that. Gives you a chance for something. And, and the price came back down on two by fours. It's not as expensive <laughs> as that we heard at the club. At one time, <laughs> it was an exotic. It was hard to get into. You couldn't get the building. You couldn't find a building outlet, a uh, building project going on where you could pick up scraps. They didn't wonder what you're stealing. Uh, Home Depot second cart. Yeah. So <laughs> well, we're looking for Kindness for that, my folks. ghost to practice wood. Remember, all these will be shown on the World's Greatest website, worldwidewoodturners.org. And that's the World's Greatest website on wood turning, and it's all developed by you. Our website director uh, puts this thing together for us, and it's a volunteer effort, just like most of the things you see here on Worldwide Wood Turners. All of our, our folks are volunteers, and we put this together out of love of what we do. And we want to have you involved. So if you've got an inkling, if you've got an idea or a thought, I mean, just you saw the tea light just now. Play with it a little bit and come up with some different shapes that'll work. I did yep. some for some friends uh, of the whim of the, I had a, somebody call me one day and said, can you come to a quick lunch? We're going to do something such. I knocked out about four or five tea lights to put on the table, stopped, bought the lights for them and uh, put them out there. And it was a, it was a hit and all, I stained them. And then he get a good finish on them. And it took me maybe an hour to knock them all out and put them in. Somebody said, oh, you talking about selling those? No, I'm going to give them to you. Here they are. It's what we do. you know. And you do the same thing when you go to a function. Remember next week, you, you still, you're still going to be partying for the holidays. Go on and bring, share a little bit of something out of your, your gallery. Give it away. Make some points. And show people that you love them by something that you know they can't get a copy of because it's from you. And that's really makes the difference. Um, somebody we said, have a couple more people that have items yes. to show. Clinton we, yes, I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware. I'm aware. All right. Who? 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 <laughs> Chrissy. Clint, turn your camera uh, on. Clint, we end up. Howdy. Hey, Talk to us. Talk to us. We have to stand. Talk to us. Then we can find you. I got you, Clint. All right. This you can to put a stick. Hold, hold What's it up? back further towards you. Yeah, that's it. That's a so, wand. It's a, a magic a, wand. From Canary Wood. Ah, good deal, man. Another one I've done only with the skew. Is it loaded? If you wave it, does it do something? Uh, no, it's a, it's a dud, but okay, it's still worth a little bit of money. <laughs> it is turning turning folks into frogs. <laughs> you cut that with a really? skew. What else you got, Clint? Uh, working on a. Hey, hi. Here's a piece of. Uh... Pull down it closer to you. Down and towards you. Yeah, there you, right there. you go. What is that, man? Right there. What is it? This Animal? is butternut that I got from Rockler. Piece of butternut. What are you, what are you making out of it? Uh, a seam ripper. Seam ripper, okay. Right on. That'd be nice. Steve, Stephen Tidwell says that anytime you introduce a wand, you got to say, ta-da! <laughs> Leviosa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right on. Thanks, I gave Sarah. away that. Oh, I showed you last week. I gave that away to my manager today. Oh, they like it? He loves it. I mean, right. but he's 
blind in one eye and half blind in the other. So his appreciation is well, yeah. well deserved. Well reserved. Good. I'm sure he, I'm sure he enjoys it. I'm sure he can be a, he gave me a bottle of bourbon for Christmas, so I had to give him something. We can oh, tell. Yeah. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> all good. We're all good. All right, let's go to Leonard. Uh, he's got some uh, he's got a two before project. How you feeling, so, Leonard? Yeah, the bug was talking well. to you. Doing well. Uh, recovering from COVID, but it was a little bit rough this past week. But uh, so as a, as a home improvement contractor, I have lots of two by four scraps. So um, I've been messing around with them, tried a few different things, um, some different shapes. Um, See, nice tea light. I found mm -hmm. these on Amazon, um, different lights so um i had just been really messing with sizes styles but they're all two by fours there you go um I got you down on the list so it's nice um different shapes I, just messing with it more than anything trying to figure out what i can do go um, back to like that second one you showed oh i like the shape of that one that's that's pretty yeah, they they tried to do different shapes to to come up with, like I said, just just different different ways of making them. This one's kind of coved up on the top, uh, kept the edges uh, square. And consider you can you can embellish them with a, a myriad of different practices, and no two will ever look alike. Well, Still. no two no two pieces of wood are the same. So ah, you know the that same. Too. Nothing's ever the same. Yep. So why well, you can't make the exact same? Never, never. Okay. That's that's what I got. All right. Now, now what do you, what do you Thank search you, for looking for looking for those tea lights? So I just I literally I just went on tea lights. Um, these are. Um, like cactuses Leonard, can, or or uh, any succulents. Chance, any, any chance you could put the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's go to thank uh, you. Let's go to Dan. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. yeah. Uh, I got your phone uh, here. He's lost I'm a lot of weight. I think he shrank. He shrank. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Try that one. Okay. okay. Now, now I'm now working on the other one. Yeah. You need to turn the volume off on the other one. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I should have left the spotlight over there. Hurry up, hurry up. Uh, volume. <laughs> That better? Yes. Okay. Now I've been working at this for a little while, and I've got a jet mini lathe that you know I can't turn the speed down on it, and I want to do some finishing with it when I do use it. So I'm working at something to make it up where I can adjust the speed. So I'm going to flip my camera around and kind of show this. Okay. And I made this that will go into here. But I made it where I have to use that. Um, I just got to figure out a way to mount something for a drill on this wood base to hold that up in there. That's a clever idea. And that's just for finishing wood, you know, like just rotate it at a lower RPM. Yeah. Yep. My big lathe, I've got that, but this one, 
that's the only kind of thing I disliked about it, you know. And you know, so four by four, put a cut a notch in it that way that that'll go up against your your little shelf that you have there, and then and take done. a take a, ra a ratchet strap to hold the drill on. And use you you could use bungees to hold the uh, the drill to the wheel there to help to, to keep it from uh, getting loose, separating or anything. Yep. Well, I was thinking of like a door hinge that I could flip it up and stick it in That's and just cool. leave it there. The wheel so when I, way. Yeah. But I'm still thinking about it, of the process of how I'm going to do it. But I got that kind, of, that part figured out that it will turn it. I loosen the belt so it's not turning the motor or anything like that. Because I don't know, it might mess up the something in there. <laughs> uh -huh. But anyway, that's what I've been doing, and I'm cleaning my shop, and it looks a whole lot different. So, other than that, I haven't been doing much. Now you're not going to be able to find anything. <laughs> I, that's it. I still but, can't find anything after I reorganized two months ago, and I'm just like, damn it, where's it at? I know I got it. So much safe. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Stan. Yep. All right. Let's go back to Texas. Holiday. See what Joaquin's got here. Hey, Joaquin. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm unmuted. All right. Uh, I'm, he's not going to be here next week. So I thought I'd, I ought to go ahead and share on this. Is oh, nice. Wig uh, stand is out of mesquite. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Then I got one I did a little more spindle work on. It was fun to do. So. But they're fun to do, and you know, all of a sudden, oh, yes. and so, uh, you're the first one for the wig, wig stand for 2024. Yeah, and for some reason, our uh, cancer society here is full or doesn't need them for some reason. I don't know what's going on over there, oh. but I've got some friends that need them, so I'll be giving them out this next week. There you go, very nice. Thank you. All right. I believe we're at the end of the list. See if anybody dropped in last second. Nope. All right. Let's go back to Eddie for closing ceremonies. Wait. You know, we, we had a big thing going with, with wig stands a couple of years ago. We did a lot of wig stands. We never did a lot. And there were some ways to get them to members, people that needed them. Uh, if you... If you want to make weak stands and you don't know where to go with them or get to, to put them in their hands, them get a hold of us. We'll see if we can find help you with that. Now, there's one project that we won't give up on, and that's called Freedom Pens. Freedom Pens is where you turn a pen and you give it to an active member of the military. It can be in a country you live in or wherever, um, and we call it Freedom Pens. It's a national concern, and Doug Rowe brought that to us. 200 weeks ago, uh, Doug Rowe was inactive in the military, and that's how I became friends with him. And we started talking about it. And when we started this operation, he said, can we mention bringing Freedom Pens? Pens? Well, we eventually developed six different contacts for the six branches of the military associated with the United States. And we have distributed pens, over a thousand of pens, to those groups. And we just had a big group go to a bunch that Matt, that uh, Doug Rowe was handling, uh, going out going out of country for a while. This is a gift from you to the people who protect our freedom. Think about that. If you served, you know how vital those little thoughts are and how important it is to you. It, it was important to me. I served. And it was an important thing to where you knew that people home supported you. And I served in those dark days of Vietnam when we weren't too sure anybody supported us. But a small yeah. gift or a small thought really counted. So turn a pen. Freedom pens counts. 
We have a detail on our website, the world's greatest website dealing with wood earning, and we'll be glad to take it. And there are no rules. There are no, 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 nothing that says it has to be a kit. Nothing says it has to be long, short, small, green, black, whatever. Uh, this is a gift, a personal gift to that person in the military. And uh, it's it's very well received. Put a little card with it. Tell them something. Thank them for protecting our freedom. Wish them well. Give them a holiday greeting, whatever you choose, because uh, it really, you feel it right here. When you give it to them and when they thank you, you feel it right here. And that's what matters. So if you can help us out with that, it's a good one. If you've got a project you want to get us involved in, let us know. Uh, this is your Witch Earning Club, after all. Uh, we gather here every, every Wednesday evening. Uh, this is all on replay. So everything that happens between 5.30 p.m. and 9 o'clock p.m. live is on a tape that's recorded. And our webmaster edits the program, the meeting, and places it on the Internet. And that's where all this is at. Then he ex excerpts the the um, the demonstration, like Bob Grinstead's piece tonight on a platter, with the shop built wood burner and all, and that's that's that goes on it. He puts the, the the entire chat section on there also, so all that stuff goes right to our website. So it goes forever, and it all goes there for free. Support your club by helping us out. Support your club by being a member. Uh, if you want to spread the word, you've seen it in a couple of people tonight. We do have stickers made just for that. I am sending stickers to the Florida Area Symposium um, for the, for to Jim Selby, who is one of our... In fact, he handles Freedom Pens for the Navy. Isn't that something? But he's going to be at that symposium. He's going to be able to pass out some stickers for Worldwide Wood Turners. If you're going to a function in 2024 and you like to have stickers for that group, contact us. Let us know. We want to work with you to get the word out because this is where it happens. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and this has been a fantastic 2023. I can't wait to see you folks back here for 2024. I really can't. Next week's going to be a fantastic week. Newsletter is going to be out, more demonstrations, more action, more ideas, more of some of the finest wood turners in the whole world showing us what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. On behalf of all those folks and all the volunteers that put this operation together each and every week, I want to wish you and yours a very merry and safe Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Y'all take care and be safe. Thank you, Eddie. Happy safe New Year, everybody. Time. Oh, I can't hear you, everybody. Night, Eddie. Night. Happy New Year. Night, everyone. Yeah. Good, and, good uh, night, Eddie. Happy New Year. And save the chat. <laughs> save the chat. There's Donald. Save the chat. Donald is back from his hiatus. Good to see you, Donald. All right.